debt is one thing, but the personal toll can be something else. Our topic today, Beyond Finances, on today's Debt Matters podcast, where we help Canadians find solutions to their debt with licensed insolvency trustees from across Canada. I'm Wayne Kay, and in today's show, Beyond Finances, we're going to talk about the personal toll of debt and how you can overcome it. How debt really affects people in different ways. What can be done to ease the personal toll, and where do you even start with that? Who do you reach out for some help? And what are some practical steps to stop the stress? My guest today, Derek Chase from Chase & Associates, licensed insolvency trustee serving Vancouver Island and the Sunshine Coast. Thanks for being here, Derek. Hi, Wayne. It's my pleasure to be here today. Oh, I like this topic. Uh, Beyond finances, personal toll of debt and how to overcome it. We all know that uh, having that debt and dealing with it is... Well, you see it all the time. You see it every single day. How does it affect people? Hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a question that we could talk about for a fair while. You know, the uh, how how debt affects people. Um, you know, thankfully we're not all the same, and uh, because of that, it, debt does affect people in in different ways. I, I think the uh, the first go to answer that people would give is that you know they just feel a lot of stress. And, and that's, that's natural, but, um, it can be, there's different levels of that, I think. And so when we're talking to people, there could be a a life event that accompanies their debt situation. It it could be, uh, you know, the, the biz, the small business that they've been working on for a lot of time, a lot of years, just been grinding away on has, has, you know, collapsed for some reason or they've gone through some sort of relationship change, which, you know, these are, these are big emotional events. And then all in addition to that, they've got this debt. And so we hear people saying to us that, um, you know, I can't sleep because of this. I I just stay up all night thinking about it. Or someone else might say, uh, you know, I'm out doing my job as a faller and and I'm thinking about this tax debt and I, I, it's dangerous. You know, it's mm-hmm. so it, it makes your makes your mind wander. I think during the day, so that's that's another way it can affect people. And then, you know, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, it, it people have done some drastic things because of of their debt load. And I'm I'm certainly uh, want to talk to anyone out there that's feeling like there's no hope in continuing on. And and I'm going to tell you that there is. So we try and not get numb to it. The fact that people are coming in and talking to us that are that are often in a very fragile state. It's yeah. good for you to share this because sometimes people are feeling these these situations, this that they feel this boulder on their shoulders and can't sleep. I mean, it's just it's all consuming. You cannot escape it. Even if you mm. you know try to go have fun with the kids, you're still thinking about it. You just cannot get away from it. And so finally they come and see you and they go, this, this is going to shock you. It's going to be the worst case you've ever seen. And then you go through it and you say, huh, that's actually not nearly as bad as I thought you were going to say, right? Yeah, that's a good point. It is very relative in the sense that um, we've had people in that only you know, owe less than $10,000 and they're convinced that they're going to be sent to jail. And, right. You know, yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. just sweating bullet, sweating bullets. And another one, another person might be closer to a million dollars and they're just, you know, mildly uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing is, you know, you're doing great in life until you're not. Mm. And, and there's so many factors to that, as we have seen over the last many years, that you just don't know what's going to happen. So, I mean, you really want to be preparing for anything that could possibly go sideways. So we know that debt will affect people in in many different ways. So let's talk about what can be done to kind of ease some of that personal toll. And where do you even start to try to get rid of this ickiness? Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a... The personal toll, you know, how do you how do you manage it while you're dealing with it, or how do you, um, you know, mitigate it? And so, I, I think a, a great solution 
or a great part of the solution is just to get some physical activity into your day. Um, and that's different for different folks. It could mean just a walk around the block um, or it could mean actually working up a sweat on a bike ride or, you know, just get moving. And, and I find that's a lot better than just sort of sitting and, and twisting things over in your mind or, or just having inactivity. So certainly uh, I would recommend that if someone's listening and they're feeling this uh, personal toll of debt. So you can overcome it partially with physical activity. Um, I think you also want to talk about it with someone that you can trust. Uh, I think that's a, that's a good way to unburden yourself is to to share that with someone who you, you feel that you can can share personal things with. And and that's that's a good way to to in the short term just uh, feel a little bit better. Yeah. And um, so you can't be shy about that. You just got to go and you got to go and do it. And um, yeah, so I think that would be a good good first step to it to at least allow you to sleep a little better that night. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. And reaching out to somebody, it's amazing um, what people will share. Look at, look at somebody who, you know, you know, has maybe gone through something or somebody who's doing well and say, Hey, well, can we go for a, can we go for a walk? I want to go for a walk. And I want to just uh, maybe ask, bend your ear, get some questions mm -hmm. and people will always uh, jump in to help. Yeah, there's a lot of people that can help, and I think we kind of lose sight of the fact that there are we are surrounded by a, a lot of people that are that can help, are willing to help, and are paid to help. Really, so one one thing that I, I like to suggest to people if they're if they're feeling this personal toll, um, having too much debt, is you know oftentimes when pe through people's work they have they have access to counseling, and. I think a lot of folks um, don't even realize that, you know, so you typically need to be working for a bigger place, you know, it's a BC Ferries or, a, or a, you know, some other type of job that has a benefit package. And, and right within that, there, there's access to counselors and you just need to book an appointment over the phone and, and you can talk to them about your situation. So that's one good resource I'd hate for someone not to use if they had access to it. And then, of course, um, other people that can speak into your life about financial matters would be usually an accountant's quite helpful with that, or a or a lawyer. And and certainly in in our role as licensed insolvency trustees, obviously we're we're more than comfortable talking about any type of uh, debt or finance matter with with people. And so the the point is that there there is a lot of people that can help, even if even if it's just to get the facts like what's the law and and then it's it's just better when you're equipped with those with that type of information so then you can make well-informed decisions you always feel the stress leave your body when you actually get an answer even if it's a mm. car problem you know and you don't quite know what it is and all of a sudden they say well it was just the fluid in the clutch was low and mm -hmm. but but yet when the clutch, I'm having a problem with it, I'm thinking, oh, this is a catastrophe. It's going to cost me gazillions of dollars. Uh, and you know what I mean? But then all of a sudden I take yeah. it to the expert. They go over it and go, yeah, no, it's an easy fix. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Whew. Okay, that's good. At least I have some options. Yeah, I can share that. Um, I probably couldn't count how many times people have told that to us in some form or another to say, you know, oh my gosh, I wish I knew about this consumer proposal three years ago. Uh, I've been dealing with this for the last three years and I'm just so glad or uh, or just expressing how much st less stress they feel while we're still in the meeting. Yeah. And and they <laughs> say, there's this pathway I can take and and wow, you know, I feel way better. I can't tell you how much better I feel. And so... Yeah, it's um, it's good to equip yourself with the the facts and know what's available, and not you know take the ostrich approach and just plunk your head in the sand and just kind of endure the beatings. Yeah, well, we know a lot of people you know who are in a, a tough situation financially. They're often you know maybe they can't sleep, so they're tuning in, and all of a sudden they find 
this podcast and they're listening to you right now, Derek. So they're not going to they're not going to book the appointment at this very moment, but they do want to know what can they do? What are some practical things that they can do right now to stop the stress? Yeah, I think a couple of practical um, ways to go about things. It's, there's nothing wrong with contacting who you owe and letting them know your situation. And, you know, lots of times creditors will make um, make different payment uh, plans available or different, uh, maybe they'll defer a payment for a month. You know, so contacting your creditors and, and letting them know what's going on in your life Um I don't think it can hurt. And and in fact, it might, it might alleviate some stress. Um, if someone, if a creditor is really collecting hard and they're, you know, phoning multiple times, you can, it's my understanding that you can send them a registered letter to advise them. You only want to deal with them in writing. Oh. And um, then they're supposed to just write to you as opposed to badgering you on the phone. I believe that's a provincial law here in BC. And, um, of course, you know, other practical steps, if, if you've come to the realization that you're just never going to pay down this debt, um, then we can certainly help with a consumer proposal or a, a bankruptcy protection. Okay. So there, there is hope is what you're telling me. Yeah. A hundred percent. You know, sometimes, yeah. uh, people think it's never going to change. They're stuck forever. And thankfully not in Canada. In Canada, we have an excellent laws that en- enable people to have a, a fresh start. And uh, once you understand how the how the programs actually work, I, I think people are far and away just just very thankful that they've had a chance they've got a chance to to get back on a good path. So certainly there is hope, and um, we'd be in a terrible place if there was no hope. <laughs> You're not kidding. Uh, the nice thing is is that you can share. You know, who you see, you see this day in and day out for many years that you've been doing this. And as you said, people wait too long. They try to solve the problems on their own. Maybe they start cashing in some of their RSPs, the TFAs. Mm. uh, Okay, we're going to have to give up the kids' education funds. And these are things you don't need to do. And it's got to be heart-wrenching when they find out that, oh, you mean I didn't have to do that? Yeah, for sure. There's uh, different exemptions that allow you to protect assets when you get protection from your creditors. And I think it's just natural to try and solve things on your own. But um, it is a shame sometimes that people get rid of assets that they might have otherwise been able to keep. So yeah, it's good to good to start asking the questions uh, before you make any big decision about liquidating your assets. It's um, something you might not have to do. So don't be afraid to reach out. And I know we're certainly glad to uh, just take a call and give some information to people. Right. And and just because they call, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden now they're going into a bankruptcy consumer proposal, anything like that. But oftentimes that can be the thing they need just to see that there are some options and what not to do. What not to do is often as, as is important as what to do. Mm-hmm. That's that's true, and and often we just steer people in a direction that they might not thought of. Like maybe they need to apply for some rental assistance, or maybe they need to change their budget a little bit, and or maybe they need to sell something, and they needed a voice to say that to them. So it's just a matter of uh, getting a fresh set of eyes on your situation, and that often can provide some clarity or some ideas that you might not have thought of before. Right. So um, yeah, why not? Why not take advantage of that? Absolutely, especially when it's a uh, free consultation. We'll give the website in just a moment. But Derek, thank you very much for being on the show. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, thanks, Wayne. I really enjoy it, and you have a great day. Well, that was Derek Chase, and you can learn more or schedule that free consultation that we've been talking about through Chase & Associates Licensed Insolvency Trustees through the website bankruptcytrusteebc.com. And that's it for today's Debt Matters podcast. If you know somebody who's going through a tough time, feel free to send them this podcast and make sure you subscribe wherever you get your favorite podcast from. And for more information, you can always check out debtmatters.ca. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.